الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters Many times people accuse us of things we have not done Sometimes people falsely accuse us in various ways. People accuse others as well of adultery. People accuse them of having affairs. These false accusations that people level either against us or against others, how do we navigate through them with contentment, with happiness. It's surely very, very difficult. Has the Quran spoken about this? Has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a method through which we can be content even through false accusations? Living in an age of social media where it is so easy to just forward a message falsely accusing of an innocent person of something they have not even done and their life can turn upside down. What type of contentment are we supposed to be achieving? when people have wronged us. Well, if you look at Surah An-Nur in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this, precisely this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ingredient for contentment and achieving of that calmness that we are meant to be achieving even through false accusations. Remember, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the daughter of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, by the name of Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, she was accused falsely of immorality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified her name. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleared her name in a way that brought about calmness and contentment not only for her and for the others, but for everyone who was to be accused up to the end of time with a false accusation. That incident brought about a lot of discomfort. It brought about a lot of sadness. It was a testing time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the people to learn the lesson. Verse number 11 of Surah An-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تحسبوه شرا لكم بل هو خير لكم لكل امرئ منهم ما اكتسب من الاثم والذي تولى كبره منهم له عذاب عظيم Allah says, don't think it was bad for you. It was actually good for you. Every person shall receive their portion of the punishment, proportionate punishment. And the one who started this whole thing, the one who actually was the big person who planned all of this will receive a very big punishment. That's what Allah says, subhanAllah. So how do we achieve contentment? By understanding it's not bad for you, it's actually good for you. How is it good for me? It's good for you because number one, Allah will elevate your status, be calm. Number two, Allah will grant you forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase the good deeds that you have by taking people's good deeds away. After having depleted your other sins that you've committed, if I've committed sins, someone is falsely accusing me, my sins go onto their shoulders, that is the payment. Or their good deeds come to me, that is part of their payment. So I'm getting free good deeds. They better have good deeds. If they don't, my sins are going to go on to them anyway. So I'm in a win-win situation. Someone saying bad things about me, falsely accusing me, spreading rumor about me or you or anyone else. Be calm, be relaxed. Allah is in control. Aren't you a good person? Yes, you are. So why are you worried? Let people say what they have to. You might struggle a little bit in this world. Small struggle. The weak are the ones who believe rumor. If you're a person who's upright, automatically you will want to verify the news. In fact, before verifying it, you will throw it out saying it doesn't concern me and this is not true. Leave it. I don't need to believe this and it's definitely something I don't want to believe. That's a good believer. If it concerns you, you have to first verify it. Many of us suffer for many reasons. Number one, we falsely accuse others. You lose contentment. 
if we falsely accuse others or we have spread that rumor, we've been a vehicle of spreading. Didn't Allah say we will punish those who spread the tale? Well, we're being punished. We've lost contentment. One of the reasons because we have accused an innocent person or we are peddling, backbiting or whatever else it may be. And if you had to create the rumor, you are not going to see contentment in your life. Very soon it will come back to haunt you. So remember this. Don't accuse people. Don't spread rumor. Don't forward messages of accusation to others. It's quick, it's easy and very fast to actually hide behind anonymity and send messages to the world in today's technological advanced, technologically advanced age. So my brothers and sisters, if you're searching for contentment, stop spreading rumors about others. And if people are spreading rumors about you, then you need to be content knowing that it's not bad for you. It's actually good for you in the long term. And in the short term, there might be a little discomfort that you might go through. But don't worry, keep smiling. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you further elevation. Sometimes the controversy will actually allow people to know the real you. When people don't know you and they think you're bad because of what someone has said, because of that controversy, when they start searching your life, they will find the real you, the gem within. So don't worry, something good will definitely come out of that accusation if you believe in Allah. And if you allow that calmness to engulf you, to overtake you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us even in verse number 21 about the devil, the path of the devil and not following it. If you follow it, you will lose contentment. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tattabi'u khutuwati shaytan wa man yattabi' khutuwati shaytan fa innahu ya'mur fa innahu ya'mur bil fahsha'i wal munkar Allah says, O you who believe, do not follow the footsteps of the devil. For indeed, whosoever follows the footsteps of the devil, he actually encourages that which is evil and immoral. So those who are encouraging that which is evil and immoral are following the footsteps of the devil. And Allah says, don't do that. You will lose contentment. You will lose your happiness. Keep smiling. Keep following that which is good. Don't spread evil. Don't spread that which is bad. If you are a person who's engaged in a sin, it's your weakness. The minute you encourage others or promote that sin in any way, you are now going to lose long-term contentment. If it was your weakness and you sought the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, definitely Allah will grant you goodness. But if you have taught others how to commit the sin, Long after you have sought the forgiveness of Allah, you are receiving sins for a bad example that you set. Therefore, Allah says, don't follow the footsteps of the devil and don't encourage that which is immoral and sinful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Verse number 23, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again warns us about accusing the innocent, especially of having affairs. You accuse someone of having had an affair. This person's having an affair. That one's having an affair. What do you think you're saying? Allah says, when you accuse the innocent believing females especially, you are cursed. Allah says, the curse is upon you. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْصَنَاتِ الْغَافِلَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ لُعِنُوا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Those who falsely accuse the chaste, innocent women of the believers, they falsely accuse them of immorality and adultery. Allah says they are cursed in this world and the next. And for them will be a very big punishment. Imagine Allah is telling you, you want to get yourself cursed? Well, start accusing innocent people of adultery and of having affairs and so on, and you will be cursed. No wonder we are suffering on the globe. A lot of people falsely accuse others. This one's having an affair with that one, and this one's sleeping around with this one and that one. These words are hurtful. When they hurt, Allah will come back to the one who caused the hurt and hurt them even more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah strengthen us. You don't need to say these things. Stop yourself. Delete messages. Become a pure person. And Allah will 
elevate your status. In verse number 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believing males to lower their gazes. Allah says, when you see something, lower your gaze for the sake of Allah. Cover yourself for the sake of Allah. The following verses, Allah speaks to the believing women as well. وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنْ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنْ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنْ Allah says, tell the believing females as well. The same instruction that we've delivered to the believing males. What's the instruction? Lower your gaze. It will help you, subhanAllah. And you know what? Lower your gaze, dress modestly, and don't display your beauty to everyone and anyone. You need to know how to carry yourself with respect. Cover yourself modestly. You will be content. The minute you show too much and you're not modest anymore, Allah says, well, you're going to have to pay a price for it. We're living in a free world indeed, where people are free to do what they want, but their choice comes at a price. They will have to pay. Ask those who are paying the price. We have the campaigns across the globe that are exposing people who have been sexual predators and so on. We ask Allah to protect us. People's lives are changing. A lot of the men are changing the way they interact with women. I'm talking here of people who don't believe. People who perhaps were not so conscious of what the lines and levels of morals and values were are becoming more and more conscious of morals and values, the dress code, the lowering of gazes, the way they treat the opposite sex. May Allah protect us. So this Allah is telling us, you want contentment? It goes two ways. Lower your gaze, dress appropriately, make sure you respect yourself and respect others. So we will not blame a woman when she is uh, perhaps abused. We will not blame her, but we will say to the other party, be careful, what you did was absolutely unacceptable. At the same time, we will encourage both and everyone to say, be modest. When you dress, bear Allah in mind. I always say, and I'm going to end on this note. If the Prophet, peace be upon him, had to meet you right here, right now, would it be okay for him to meet you and you would not be embarrassed? If that's the case, you're dressed okay. If you would be embarrassed, you can do much better in your dress. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiya. Al-lazheena amanu wa tatma'innu qulubuhum bi dhikri allahi ala bi dhikri allahi tatma'innu القلوب